Greetings friends, this is Survival Doc. Today I want to talk about communications, in particular ham radios. Now I briefly discussed this topic in one of my recent videos where I talked about networking because ham radios of course are going to be the primary way you're going to network with your group uh, when the grid goes down when there's no electricity. All right, in this video, I'm going to go a little bit further into ham radios and so a few things that I recommend uh, that you do. All right, first of all, realize that when the grid goes down, all right, and there's no electricity, all right, if there is an, an EMP, it has been estimated that we may be without electricity for 10 years or longer before they can get all of the transformers that are going to be blown out with an EMP uh, replaced. All right, we don't even make these transformers in this country anymore. Uh, the waiting list is about six months when they order a transformer. Now they have a few uh, in stock, of course, uh, but when they're all blown, uh, there, there aren't going to be nearly enough uh, to replace them. Uh, we, and you can imagine how long it's going to take to get them back. Like I said, it's been estimated that we may be without, ele uh, without electricity for 10 years. But regardless, if we're without electricity for 10 years, <clears throat> a year, a month, whatever, when we're without electricity, that means that our normal methods of communication are going to be down. All right? Phones are not going to work. Your cell phone probably isn't going to work. Your computer, <coughs> excuse me, your computer isn't going to work. Uh, there isn't going to be any internet. All right, the only communications you're going to get are going to be emergency communications from the government. And as you know, you can't believe anything that the government tells you. It is all lies, especially in an emergency that they probably created through a false flag in the first place. You think you're going to get the truth from them? Everything that we do after an emergency is going to depend on our ability to communicate with like-minded people or communicate with other people in our network. And ham radio is going to be the method of choice. Uh, according to uh, John Moore, who is a, a, a big prepper expert, he makes his living by advising people um, in prepping. He has a radio show on Republic Broadcasting Network every weekday at 6 o'clock in the morning. All right, one thing that John Moore says is that when the crowd hits the fan, the two skills that are going to be most important, most in demand, are going to be uh, ham radio skills and medical skills. All right, I'll add a third to that, and that's going to be networking skills. All right, but ham radio certainly ranks up there. It's going to be very important. Now, I used to think it cost a lot of money to get into ham radios. As I've gotten into it, I've learned that that is not the case. You can get an excellent radio. This is the Baofeng uh, radio. You can order these from Amazon.com for about $30. These are excellent radios. Now, one thing I learned in my ham radio class is that what's more important than the radio is your feed line and your antenna. You can unscrew the antenna, you can plug a cable in here. This is a little magnetic uh, antenna that you can put on top of your vehicle, but you can also use it in your house. Uh, you can also plug in an antenna into this thing that you have on the roof of your house. It also doesn't cost a lot of money uh, for antennas because most of the antennas that ham radio people use, they make themselves just by using wire and a few other uh, accessories. Here's a good book. Uh, the Antenna Book has a lot of information in there about how to make your own antenna depending on what use that you want. Now if you notice I've got two ham radios here. 
Uh, the reason for that is I have one extra one that is going to be put in storage. I'll put this in a Faraday bag, put this away in storage so that it won't be damaged by an EMP. Now I don't know uh, exactly what damage an EMP might do to our radios. It might not cause any damage to them at all. If it's attached to an outdoor antenna, it probably will. But regardless, these radios only cost $30. And of all the things that us preppers are putting into storage, I think an extra $30 for an extra radio, not a bad idea. Now another thing is if we're without electricity, you want to be able to operate this thing. You want to be able to charge it. Now the chargers are AC chargers generally. Plug into your a normal outlet, but you can get DC chargers. These are designed, this plugs right into this charger here. This is an adapter that allows you to charge your helm radios with a 12 volt battery, like in your car. Essential item, because if you're without electricity, you want to be able to charge your helm radio. I believe unless you have a very expensive electronic uh, system with expensive thousands of dollars of batteries and the thousands of dollars of solar array, uh, which a lot of us are, do not have the money to go completely off grid in that fan fashion, but it doesn't cost a lot of money just to have a simple 12 volt system. I put a couple of um, solar panels on my roof. Uh, solar panels cost about $80 a piece, $10 for a charge controller, about a hundred bucks for a battery. I'd like to get a better uh, battery, but for a starter battery, spend about a hundred dollars. Uh, and I have a system that will allow me to continue using 12 volt items. I got a 12 volt charger like this for my laptop computer. Of course, the internet is, li is likely to be down. Um, I won't be using my laptop computer for internet if that's the case, but I might be using it for other things. Uh, I've got to have a lot of uh, DVDs uh, that I can watch instructional DVDs, but it, it'll be nice to be able to uh, use your laptop computer. If you have a 12 volt system, there's a lot of things you can do. You can't keep your freezer running uh, or a refrigerator running with a small system like that, but you can use it to charge up your rechargeable items like your laptop and in particular your ham radio. All right, now you have to have a license to operate a ham radio. The good news is ham radio clubs everywhere have free classes. Take a weekend class or so, do a little bit of studying, then you can take the exam and get the license. Total cost about $15, which is what it costs to take the exam and get your license. That's it. $15 for your license, $30 or so for a radio, another five or so for a few accessories, some wire for an, an antenna. Um, hundred bucks can get you into ham radio. Then if you want a, a simple solar system, another hundred bucks or so, or a couple of hundred bucks can get you a solar system that will allow you to keep all these batteries charged up. This is a Faraday bag. A Faraday bag protects um, items from uh, EMP. This is a little uh, charge controller. I have two of these. I have one of these in operation right now. Uh, and then I have a spare. This thing costs about $10 and it's good for seven, uh, seven amp uh, charge controller. What you do is you take your solar panel, connect it to this, and then connect that to your batteries. And what it does is it keeps your batteries charged up and it will not overcharge your battery. Once your battery is charged up, then it shuts off um, so you don't overcharge your battery. Another simple device but costs about the same amount as a device which prevents you from over discharging your batteries. A few simple things um, that you need for your um, solar system. It doesn't cost thousands of dollars to have a small solar system that will allow you to keep uh, 
your items charged up. Um, lanterns, uh, LED lights, um, flashlights, rechargeable flashlights, all sorts of items, rechargeable items uh, that you can charge from a simple 12 volt system. Now I know that some preppers buy a ham radio like this they put it in storage and then they think that when the crowd hits the fan they're going to pull this out and they're going to start using it to communicate. Well guess what? As I found out it takes a lot of skill and know-how to operate one of these things. It's not just a matter of turning it on and talking. Don't think that when the crowd hits the fan you're going to pull this out and know what to do with it. You need to start using it now. That's the reason you need to take the class you need to get a license and then you need to start communicating with other ham people. Then you need to get your network, other preppers, the people who are you are prepping with, people involved in your network, you need to work out a ham network among yourselves. Now one uh, one thing that you can do with these little handheld um, radios is you can communicate with people at a fair distance using repeaters. And what that means is rather than going from radio to radio, you just have to contact a repeater, which is a tall tower somewhere, and bounce off that repeater. That repeater repeats your message and sends it, broadcasts it out, so you can communicate with someone at quite a distance. Well, the problem with repeaters is they may have a battery backup which will keep them running for maybe a day or so after they lose electricity but eventually they will run out of electricity as well if they're not knocked out by the EMP. I don't think you can count on repeaters. What you need to do is you need to communicate with other ham radio people in your group radio to radio. Now working radio to radio you are limited uh, in, in the distance that's the reason that you all need to get your ham radios and you need to start working with them. All right, you can put an antenna on the roof of your house. You can put all kinds of antennas, including directional antennas, but you need to work out a system with other preppers where you have perhaps a relay system where if you cannot communicate with everybody in your group, maybe you can communicate with a person who can communicate with another person in your group and you can work out a relay system. But when the crap hits the fan, it is going to be absolutely essential that you're able to communicate with other people in your network and you're going to need uh, some type of a phone tree type system. Uh, so you need to get all of your people involved with ham radios you all need to get a license and you need to work out the details right now. Don't wait until the crap hits the fan. If you do, you're going to be totally lost. What I did with my solar system, I purchased a 30 watt solar panel. It's a 12 volt uh, solar panel, 30 watt, to charge my 12 volt battery. You need to get a deep cycle battery. One that's designed to be drained say 50% or so. Most batteries like the ones in your car are designed to be topped off at all times. A deep cycle battery allows you to discharge it. You still don't want to discharge it more than 50%. Uh, if, you do, if you completely discharge a a uh, lead acid battery, what you're going to do is you're going to ruin the battery. Just one complete discharge can drastically uh, decrease the life of a battery. Now if you have the money, the, the batteries you want to, if you have a, a large solar array for your house, the batteries that you want to use are zap work batteries. And what those are is they're nickel alkaline batteries. Are unlike uh, lead acid batteries, which last maybe 10 years or so, uh, a nickel alkaline battery will last a lifetime. And you can discharge it completely without ruining the battery. 
but they are very expensive. To get a, 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 a full system will cost you maybe a couple of thousand dollars. All right, so for our use on a limited budget, we're just stuck with the little the lead acid batteries, but you do want to get a deep cycle battery. You still don't want to discharge it beyond 50%. That's the reason that you want a dis, uh, over discharge protector. And what an over discharge protector does is it allows you to discharge the battery just to a certain point and then it shuts it off. And then you cannot use the battery until it's charged back up again through your, your solar panels. Now I bought, like I said, a 12 volt 30 watt uh, solar panel. I hooked it up to my charge controller, to my battery. All right, I like the system so well, I said, and, and the solar panels were so affordable that I got another um, 30 uh, watt um, solar panel. And in the picture that I'll show you um, here, the, uh, these, are, these are two 30 watt uh, solar panels hooked up in parallel. To make the frame to hold my solar panels, I use metal sh shelving uh, pieces. These are reused legs from a metal shelf unit that I put together with uh, stainless steel nuts and bolts. These are the two panels side by side on my roof. These are 12 volt panels. They're connected in parallel which keeps the voltage at 12 volts. Connected in parallel. For a total of 60 watts very, very effectively, very quickly uh, keep a 12 volt battery or a couple of 12 volt batteries connected in parallel um, charged up. What I did once I got this system completely worked out, then I completely disassembled it. I took the solar panels, I boxed them back up, and I put them away because I have these just for an emergency and I'm, I'm waiting until uh, we're without electricity and then I can pull these out in a, in a matter of an hour or so I can have this system back up. But by taking it off the roof it's protected from hail storms or other type of storms or for EMPs. As a matter of fact the boxes that I have the, uh, that the um, solar panels came in I lined with aluminum foil and made my own Faraday boxes to protect these panels uh, from an EMP. Here's the box that one of my solar panels came in. I used glue and glued uh, aluminum foil to the inside of the box. Or you don't want the solar panel to come in contact with the foil so you use the uh, padding or a plastic uh, bag around your solar panel. All right, so if an EMP occurs, I've got everything ready to put up. All right, now what about my batteries? You, you have to keep the batteries topped off. So what I did was I had the charge controller that I used on my solar panel, I connected to a simple 12 volt transformer. So in other words, a transformer that plugs into the AC outlet uh, takes the place of my solar panels that I had on the roof and the transformer keeps the batteries topped off. The batteries are ready to go. So if we lose electricity, I've got my 12 volt batteries ready to go. I can charge all of my devices until I get the solar panels back up. Take me an hour to get the solar panels back up because I've got everything I need already in place. Hour, the panels are back up the battery is operational and I'm back in business again. Like I said, with this simple system, I'm not going to run a refrigerator, I'm not going to run my freezer, but I'm just going to have a, a power supply to where I won't rely on kerosene lanterns, I won't have to rely on candles. I have um, several LED lanterns, I have 
a whole storage of rechargeable uh, nickel cadmium, not nickel cadmium, but the me uh, uh, metal hydride, the, new, the newer type of rechargeable batteries. Got a bunch of those. I, I keep in my refrigerator. I take them out, make sure they're topped off. Every six months or so, I take them out and charge them up. Make sure they're topped off and put them back in the refrigerator to uh, uh, keep the uh, storage life. Here is a nice um, battery charger. Just put your battery charge four batteries at one time, any size, D, C, AA, AAA batteries. Uh, this has an adapter that plugs into it that you can plug into uh, your AC outlet. However, this is 12 volt. I got this particular one for a reason, and that is it is 12 volt. I do have the wiring that I can plug from my 12 volt battery into this and I can keep all of my nickel, not my nickel, but my, my metal hydride batteries. I can keep them all charged up with this charger right here. Uh, before the crap hits the fan, I can use AC to keep them topped off. When the crap, crap hits the fan and I no longer have AC, I can operate this thing with my 12 volt battery. With my rechargeable batteries, I have LED lanterns uh, that I can keep operational. I can keep my radios operational. I can keep my computer operational. Uh, there are a lot of things. I can't heat my house with it. I've got wood burning stove for that. Uh, I can't keep my food refrigerated. I've got food preservation techniques like dehydration and stuff like that that I use to preserve my food that don't require electricity but it does allow me to keep my electronic devices, uh, including my flashlights, my lanterns, and my radios operational for an indefinite amount of time uh, once the grid goes down, no matter how long the grid is down. This is Survival Doc, reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be fleeced.